The last thing I wanted to get done on the barn before my sister's wedding reception is to build a chandelier. I'm embarrassed my barn hasn't had a chandelier up until this point. I, I just have no good excuses for it. But I got to thinking about how cool it would be to have a big lighting centerpiece hanging over the dance floor as my sister and her husband had their first dance underneath it. I wanted to make it look rustic and make it look like it belonged in a barn. I definitely wasn't going to be hanging some gaudy gold and diamond covered extravagance you'd be seeing in the Ritz Carlton lobby. In fact, I thought a couple of the 8x8 beams I had left over from the barn would work pretty well. These beams were pushing what I could cut on my miter saw. In fact, they wouldn't quite fit under the blade. I had to leave them out a little ways and then bring the saw outward to get the saw to fit underneath it. I had to cut one side as deep as I could and then I'd flip it over and do my best to get it lined up again before cutting through on the underside. The barn was built using mortise and tenon joints and one of these beams still had the tenon joint on the end of it, which I thought looked pretty cool. And I decided to keep it and make the other ends of the chandelier all match this as well. I thought it would kind of be an homage to the rest of the barn. I cut as much as I could with the skill saw, and then what was left, I zipped out with the sawzall. I also learned that the blade does a good job of roughing up the new cuts and makes it look like it fits with the rest of the beam a little bit. I drilled out the dowel holes to match and went around the edges with the planer. With the ends done, I moved on to notching out the center of the beams so they'll sit over each other in a lap joint. It took me a while to get the depth set right on the saw, but once I did, I got in a bit of a rhythm and cranked through these cuts fairly quickly. I always do the cuts on the ends first so I don't mess up and cut too far. Oh, that's so satisfying. The claw end of my hammer works just as good as anything else I've found for removing a good portion of the nubs that are left. Then I carefully slide the beam back and forth on the saw to really clean it up and give it a nice smooth finish. It was just a little too tight the first time and didn't seem like it was going to go. So I took it apart and cleaned up the sides a little bit with the planer. And the second go around, they slid together really nicely. I planned on putting one big bolt through both the beams right in the center to really hold them together tight. And I thought instead of just using a couple of flat washers on the top and bottom, I could cut out some decorative brackets. I'm kind of looking for 
any excuse I can find to use a CNC table these days. I drew up something in Illustrator and got it cutting out. I decided to make the brackets in a couple pieces so it would fit the scrap pieces I had and it would use less material. I took the pieces up to the shop and after cleaning them up, I got them clamped down to the table in place and welded both sides. I really wanted to use a drill press to drill the center hole so I could make sure I drilled through it straight. I just knew I was going to be crooked if I drilled it by hand. I found the center point of the beams and slid my bench top drill over there and it was like a quarter of an inch off center. Just wouldn't quite reach. So I grabbed a bigger drill press and it was exactly the same actually. The only other thing I could figure to do is to clamp down a piece of metal to the beam and then I could use the mag drill. Worked better than I thought actually. I went to the fastener store in town and I walked up to the counter and I said to the guy, I want to buy the biggest bolt you have. The biggest they had in stock was an inch and a half. So I just went with that. I was hoping for two inch, but they would have had to order it and it cost us quite a bit more. So probably wasn't worth it. The mag drill didn't quite go deep enough to drill all the way through. So I just finished it off with the hand drill. I planed a little bit off the top and bottom so the plates would sit flush on them. And then I stuck the bolt through. I had to use a couple pipe wrenches to get it tightened down because I didn't have any other wrenches that would go that big. I also bought some chain when I was in town, but when I got back to the barn, I decided I didn't want to use it because it was shiny and I thought it was going to really stand out against the older materials used for the rest of the chandelier. Then I realized I might as well go ahead and make my own chain. Again, looking for an excuse to fire up the CNC table. I obviously couldn't make the chain links complete loops, unless I wanted to weld each one closed as I assembled it or something. But I thought I could make them an S shape and have the openings be tight enough that it would hopefully keep the chain assembled. I had someone comment that the chain Reminded them of a barrel of monkeys, which I probably was kind of subconsciously thinking about when I drew up the plans for the chain. This is the center top plate that the four chains will all hook to. I needed to drill out a hole for the big eye bolt that I found on the farm that I wanted to use for this. I heated up each corner and bent them down roughly matching the angle that the chains will come up and attach at. I had a lot of cleanup to do on the chain links, and I got to work on that. I used a flat disc to clean up the slag. Once I had them all cleaned up, I wanted to give everything a coat of beeswax and linseed oil paste before they got any rust on it. I found out the easiest way to apply this paste to something like this is to just get your hands covered in the stuff, and then you can rub it into every crack and corner on the different pieces. It's a little gross but I think it works pretty good. And then I wipe off any excess with the rag afterwards. After they're all coated, I got to work assembling the chain. The links would definitely be a lot stronger if they were complete loops, but I'm guessing the chandelier at most weighs 200 pounds. 
and 200 divided by 4 is 50 pounds for each length of chain. I'm sure the 3 8 inch plate I cut the links out of will be plenty strong for this. Plus, I told my sister that it wasn't all that good of a party if there wasn't at least one drunk person hanging from the chandelier at the end of the night. So I gotta count for that weight too. I needed to fabricate some brackets to attach the chains to on the ends of the chandelier. And after a few too many iterations, I finally came up with this simple design. I took the shapes from all four sides and flattened them onto a single plane, which I could send to the CNC table and get cut out. There's an external plugin that lets you export as a DXF file directly from SketchUp, which is pretty awesome. That's the file format needed for the CNC table. I typically measure the piece of metal I'm going to be cutting from and draw it in SketchUp as well so I can be sure that all my shapes will fit on the material. Once I had my four brackets cut, I took them up to the shop and set up my piece of crap homemade bender. This thing gets the job done, I guess, but it's definitely a pain in the butt. Hopefully I can upgrade one day. It's a good upper body workout at least. The beams vary quite a bit in their dimensions. Some places they're up to half an inch wider than other places. And so I made these brackets so I could measure each one individually and cut the spacers to match. I cut all the spacers about an eighth of an inch smaller than they measured, so it'd still suck them down tight when I bolted through them. I made the holes for this top bolt slotted, thinking that if the chandelier is heavier, on one side and hangs a little crooked, then hopefully I can make up for it by moving these links inward or outward. I thought I'd start off with them all in the middle though. See how it goes. I also wanted to stick a short leg screw in each side of the beam, just to make sure that the bracket doesn't slide inward. I thought I'd just use a rope to help hold up the center bracket while I attach the chains to the chandelier. I had more than one concerned family member voice their opinion that they thought the rope was not going to be strong enough to hold up the chandelier after they peeked in the barn to see how my progress is going. They were pretty happy to hear that I was just using it to hold up the chains until I was ready to raise it up with some strong cable. Well, I think I'm ready to put some lights on this thing. 